is this thing on? Hello, sunshine. Hi, sexy. How you doing? It's time for another video. This is Elijah Smith from Iconoclast, Jermaine. And I am the Iconoclast. Jermaine? Whatever. Okay. I thought that I would do a video about the third step in the process. Well, the process that I use. Um, it's... It works for me, so if it works for me, I figure it will work for you. We'll try to get some light. Thought I'd get a break from this research. Y'all, I'm living on caffeine and dreams. Caffeine, nicotine, and dreams. Um, the research is going well, but I'm tired as hell. As if you cannot already tell, because I'm slipping and tripping whenever I'm video dipping. Okay. The third step in the process that I use is grief work, social, I'm a, yeah, it almost tongue ties me, social circle work, and repatterning work. Now, you don't have to use, you don't have to use my, my process. There's a lot of, really class A YouTubers out there that and consultants and life coaches and their shit works okay uh, the I guess the main difference with me is you get everything here for free all right before we go on I keep forgetting to say hit the like button if this shit helps you share this video with somebody and hit the subscribe, you sexy motherfuckers. Okay, I think that we might cut the third step into three videos. Into three videos. And this one's going to be mainly about grief work. And why do we want to talk about grief work? Well, mainly because... If you start with those boundaries, like I fucking told you, you're doing your boundaries right. Healthy goddamn boundaries. You get those healthy goddamn boundaries. Do you hear me? All right. Healthy boundaries first. Um, ideally, when you're working all the four steps, you're going to be, well, you're going to be working all of them together. But a lot of times, a lot of times... Um, if you're like me, if you want to save years off of like the emotional trauma work, the psychological work, um, therapy and whatnot, you want to start with your boundaries. Uh, if, and it's going to be something that you're going to be doing pretty much for the rest of your life. And once you start, I mean, and basically it's, well, anyway, I've done videos on boundaries and, and we'll do, and we'll do more. We'll do more because that's just the way it is. Okay. Grief work. When you put up your boundaries and you're working on those healthy boundaries, what tends to happen is that a lot of the toxic people in your life, all those hurtful son of bitches, the so-called narcissistics and the sociopathics and those types, they tend to fall away. Or you tend to push them away. Or you tend to avoid them. And there will come a time when you will be pretty much isolated for a while and if you and uh, no one told me I, I found out about it later it's like okay thanks a fucking lot now but when 
you become isolated. You're like, fuck, I'm doing this fucking work. What the hell? But you actually need that time. Because once you start working any type of a therapeutic or spiritual process, the, I'm just going to say the old you or parts of the old you die away. Some of them call the ego, but you can't really kill the ego. If you kill, if you killed the ego, you just die. But that sort of codependent or enabling or even um, self-abusive part of you starts to die or dies. Now when it happens, you're not gonna be attracted to a lot of the same types of people. You just won't wanna be around it. And for me, I got bored. But also, you will begin to see and it's been termed in different religions, um, the illusion. The illusion of certain shit just falls away. And when that happens, like in the manosphere, um, a lot of dudes get fucking pissed off. They get angry. Um, you get depressed. You can get nihilistic, nihilistic, but you can't go back. Even if you were to try to go back, you would only, it would only be like pretending because you would not be that person anymore. You just wouldn't. And that's a good thing because there's a difference between pain and suffering. And once you go through the initial pain of it, which is what hang on this track. Which is what step two is about, emotional literacy and emotional processing. We we had to sort of sit with it and feel it and heal it, not judge those emotions, just let them do their thing. But you're gonna grieve certain things. Uh, you're gonna grieve the parents that you didn't have. You're going to grieve the time you wasted. You're going to grieve that old person that you were. You know, because there will be times that you're like, well, fuck, I was okay with this, this, and this before I knew this bullshit. But it's not bullshit. It gets really... It gets really dark and really depressive there for a while. But if you follow through and do the steps, life gets shit tons and shit tons fucking better. Washing windows at this hour, what's wrong with you? I didn't ask for it. She said, I didn't ask for it. She said, they just told me to. They just told me to. That's because it's more fun. For them, maybe. I, me. No, I can see I can see their point of view. I'm sorry, short shit. I can see their point of view. The only thing better would be like put springs on your feet. That would be That would be so helpful. Yeah. yeah. Maybe suction cups in case you know you started to fall off or fall toward the concrete. Yeah. <laughs> You have a good one, baby doll. Me too. Okay. <coughs> but you're gonna you're gonna have to grieve a lot because to come to a place of acceptance. You have to realize a lot of shit. Like those people who are toxic or abusive to you, um, that they're simply at a certain level. Uh, even like the straight up sociopaths or fucking psychopaths, 
or the so-called narcissist and there are very few total narcissists we live in a narcissistic society which basically means childish and toxic to each other right but when you go to Greece, I know I'm prattling I'm trying to catch my brain on this shit I'm so fucking tired y'all um, the research is fucking, the research is fucking killing me in some fucking ways. No, it's not. It's, it's good, but it's tiring. Okay. You, uh. You're going to come to understanding. And, which we're going to come to another part of this, like, really soon. Um, that. This is just the way that they are. Or who they're being right now and it doesn't matter what we think reality should should or shouldn't be um, I know I know I'm looking rough but god damn it we still we still sexy we still sexy okay we still sexy we are so sexy so sexy are we okay so In order to release and heal some of that pain, you have to forgive these people. Now, if you're new to this shit, let me put a disclaimer. Let's get into some fucking light. I look like a fucking mugger right now. Okay. If you're new, let's go here to the post office, maybe. Maybe they won't fucking arrest us. I don't fucking know. Okay. If you're new to this shit, I will say that forgiveness is not probably what you've been told. We'll stop here. We won't go all the way here. Um, all forgiveness is is releasing, just releasing People that have harmed you out of your mental space, out of your emotional space, and um, your mental, your psychological, your emotional space, because you want to free that up for other shit. Let's go on a little walk. I do something to wake up. And that's all that it is. It's letting them be. It is not letting them off the fucking hook, y'all. You hear me? You hear me? Listen up. It is not letting them off the hook. All that it is doing is just letting them be. Just releasing them from your motherfucking life. You hold the goddamn boundary. You hold that line, soldier. You fucking hold it. Because a lot of you, I mean, and if you're like me, and I bet you, I bet you, that most of y'all aren't like me. You want to be nice. Or because of the old feels, you want to let them back in. And you let them slip aside. And if your boundaries come down, and you, and you fuck up, don't give up. Just replace the goddamn boundary and try again. I, whenever I first started, these motherfuckers were pushing hard. And I had to push hard back. And we might talk about mistakes that you can make while doing boundaries, but okay, you you want to forgive. Um, a lot of the grief work will have a lot to do with will have a lot to do with breakup shit. Um, some of us have had the fucking shit tra traumatized out of us uh, during breakups. And and trauma bonding with some of these types, they come back, they start displaying better behavior. You take them back, they slide back into the old behavior, and it goes and goes and goes until you decide to break it. And then it's like, it's, it's like, uh, 
It's like coming down off a of fucking cocaine or something because... Sorry about that. That cop was loud. Okay. It's like coming down off of cocaine or something or an addictive drug. You think you're not going to miss it. You really do. And then you start to remember some of the good shit that they did or some of the sweet times or the good times and you let them back in. On average, uh, people like us will let those motherfuckers back in about seven goddamn times before we learn a lesson. And it just happens. Okay, so you, you got grieving the past that we didn't have, grieving the parents we didn't have, uh, grieving the breakup, um, grieving our old selves, our old ignorant selves. Or the old version of us. You know, sentimental. But you have to have a funeral for that person. Because you can't go back and you're not the same. You're really... I mean, honestly, you're not the fucking same. Alright, let's... I don't know, we'll walk down this way. It's still pretty fucking dark, but I don't give a fuck. But that's... But that's the, the best thing about the grief work. Let's see, what else? Um, a big one, a lot of times, is just grieving that childhood. But there again, we're grieving it. We're not holding on and doing the poor me shit. There are no fucking victims here, sunshine. There are none. There are none. If you want to get better... You have to claim responsibility and accountability for everything. I know that's fucked up, and it's, like I said, it's not to let them off the hook. It most definitely is not. All that it's saying is that maybe we allowed it, or maybe we claim that we allowed it, even if, um, even if we had no choice in the matter. Uh, just by being born. I know that's fucked up, right? It's a hard one to wrap your head around. And there again, not to let them off the fucking hook. It's not to say, oh, it's okay because I... No. It's not okay. You want to feel those fucking feels. <coughs> you want to recognize the patterns. Because once you... Once you recognize the patterns... And you grieve... Over how things aren't... Or how things could have been. You just grieve it. You bring it up. I've really got to get a better camera. You uh, bring it up. You feel it. And a lot of times it dissolves on its own. And a funny thing happens. A funny thing fucking happens. When it dissolves on its own, you tend to be able to see these people coming before they do that shit to you again. You just tend to see it. And you'll hear me talk about intention. Uh, what is the difference between a narcissist, someone with a healthy ego, and, or something like that, or a healthy self-esteem that's coming to you? It, it's their intention. It, is their intention just to fucking take? Then chances are they're probably narky. Is their intention just to manipulate? Then, their chan then chances are they're probably narky. <laughs> I gotta get some more water in me. My skin looks like shit. Okay. I know that. I know I've prattled on quite a bit. But when you start processing this grief, like I said, you're going to just begin to see. And when it heals up, you'll be able to take a look. At some of those old memories and see people's patterns. And when you see people's patterns, there's sunshine. Sometimes you'll know what they're gonna do before they do it. You can cut them off at the pass. Because most of these toxics 
aren't that bright. They're not that bright. You give them way too much credit. Way too much credit. But yeah, it just becomes easier. And now that we dealt with grief, I think in the next video, we'll talk about so the social circles and maybe proper window cleaning. I don't know, I'm, <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. I keep streaking. It looks like you got clothes on, but okay, I'll take your word for I it. I don't know, pay me enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so Elijah from what kind of class you made? Who are you that I'm messing with? Who are you? What's your name? Destiny. Destiny. Mm -hmm. Who's Makes Destiny? Sense, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, looking through the window yeah, for Destiny. destiny. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I knocked it over. Okay. All right, have I a good one, hon. <laughs> Hey, I've been there, done that. Oh. There's nothing like Denny's at like 7 o'clock in the morning after a fucking weekend. Yeah. Shit and everything on the walls. Oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It makes you enjoy that, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm good with this. All I'll right. stick to my day job. <laughs> All right. Bye, baby girl. Bye. All right. We'll talk about social. Uh, God damn. I'll, I'll get that right in a moment. Social circle work in the next video. And just remember, if Jesus won't save you. And Buddha won't enlighten you. And your Ford won't fucking run. It, it won't. It fucking won't. Come over to the Chevy side. We have cookies. And if Allah won't do... I don't know. I don't know what Allah's supposed to do. Allah. Um, you're still welcome. You're still welcome here. Be good. No, fuck it. Just be good at it. And behave. And remember that self-interest, self-care, and self-love. Always let those people choose to be around you. Anyone. We want to go where we're celebrating. And not tolerating. And that way, when we give them the good stuff, they'll appreciate it. All right, you said some more things. All right, you said some more things. This is E.P. Smith, and I'll see you next time.